Formula One experience here at the Circuit of the Americas. I'm Jonathan Green. I'm delighted to be joined by an old friend of mine and, of course, NBC Sports' Lee Diffie, who is, of course, with the rest of the team bringing the coverage to the USA and have been uh, for the last uh, year. And it's been fantastic, may I start by saying. We've really enjoyed it. And I think you guys are doing a heck of a job in bringing this very technical and tough sport uh, to, to cover to America. Well, that's good. Thanks, Jonathan, and thanks for having me on. Um, it has been quite the ride this year for <laughs> us. Um, you know, uh, sometimes change is, is uh, perceived well, sometimes it's not. And, you know, we, uh, NBC, uh, acquired the rights to Formula One away from, uh, from the Fox group after some 17 years, you know, so it was a long time. Um, and uh, we've been very excited. Uh, we've worked hard. We've got a very, we don't have a very large, but we have a very passionate and dedicated group. Um, based out of uh, NBC Sports headquarters in Stamford, Connecticut. So it's been a lot of work. Um, there's been uh, a lot of learning, uh, but it's been a fun ride. And, um, you know, just being here uh, with, with F1 fans uh, here at Circuit of the Americas and, and in downtown Austin um, at various functions, just really good to speak with the fans face to face and hear their feedback and, and uh, um, just how, how they've enjoyed the year as much as we have, you know. You know, over the years, we've our careers have crossed paths so many times. We've talked about success of Formula One in America and what it would take. Um, I remember covering back in the mid-90s, and it was still gaining traction then, even then Jack Villeneuve was at the height of his powers. Um, and I think this is a new era, would you agree, for Formula One? And the Circuit of the Americas is such a catalyst to this new era, as well as the television coverage on NBC. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, now that we've got, you know, Formula One is on NBC. Formula One has a dedicated home here now at Circuit of the Americas. A lot of people talk about the, the glory years of Formula One in America, and especially that 20-year span at Watkins Glen. You know, legendary circuit, great place, people like the track. Uh, all the Formula One greats uh, race there. So, yeah, now it is time to, to turn the page and let's start again. Let's, well, not start again, but let's revitalize and revive and get it going again. And last year here was just such a great shot in the arm for Formula One in this country. Um, it's what it needed. First class venue, great weather, awesome race, an appreciative crowd. Um, all, all of those in important and necessary ingredients were put into the mix. And so that's why we come here this year with so much excitement and, and really looking forward to the event and, and kind of kick-starting Formula One in this country again. We're fans, so of course we're going to watch and we're going to be involved. And, and, you know, we know that so many of you out there are in exactly the same boat as us, but we've got to try and get that message and get it out there because there's so much competition, you know, not only within various categories of motorsport and in this country, NASCAR, but, you know, uh, other sports, football and baseball, etc. You know, uh, is Formula One going to be, be a massive sport in this country? No, of course it's never going to be, this, you know, like NASCAR or... or, or um, uh, NFL or something like that, but we can certainly grow it, and that's what we're we're trying our uh, our hardest to do. And it's not it's an it's an interesting balance as well when you're doing television coverage because yes, you want to give the the fan of Formula One what they want, and they want the technical side that Match It will bring. Uh, they want to hear you know what the inside story is with Vettel and so on and so forth. But then you've got the more casual viewer that wants to learn, that wants to to, to experience Formula One for the first time. So you've got to balance that out by keeping it simple by by perhaps doing partly education too as well and entertainment too because I think the biggest key is the personalities there's a lot of great personalities among the drivers that we've got here sure. and because of the way Formula One is you know they've got helmets on and they're going 135 miles an hour a lot of the time so we need to get those off and we need to learn about those personalities and I think again your show has done a great job of doing that thank you yeah well when you work out the secret can you let me know <laughs> let all of us know because it's the ultimate challenge it's the hardest part you know to to please somebody who is the 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 most hardcore of fan uh, of Formula One, and then you've got the, the casual viewer, you know. So to try and find that balance is the ultimate challenge, and I think no matter what sport you're covering, you're always trying trying to do that and trying to achieve that. So um, we will continue to. <laughs> now I know that everybody's very familiar with your face, and we are old friends. So I'm just going to let him into a little secret here. You're not doing so bad for an old primary school teacher from uh, Ipswich, Ipswich in England, are you? I I, I know. <laughs> so uh, Ipswich in Australia. Uh, you're excuse me. <laughs> um, but uh, I tell you a funny story, and there's a guy here, he might be able to hear this, uh, there's a guy here on Pit Road, and um, he is Daniel Ricciardo's right-hand man. He's his trainer, yep. works with him a little bit on the sports psychology side, but a lot on the physical side, and uh, his name is Stuart Smith, and um, I was standing in the pit lane at Barcelona earlier this year at the test, and it was freezing cold, and David Hobbs was standing, and I was standing outside the Toro Rosso garage, and just looking in, and... Uh, Anyway, I had a tap on my shoulder. I turn around and there's this tall gentleman standing there and he says, uh, 
are you Lee Diffie? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, uh, you probably don't remember me, but I'm Stuart Smith. And he said, you were my PE teacher when I was 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't seen him since. And uh, anyway, we've, we've rekindled our friendship now, so it's amazing. And Stewie's here this weekend working hard with Daniel. Obviously, they've got a, a huge year coming up with, uh, with uh, Infinity Red Bull Racing. So, yeah, it's amazing how your lives, you know, crisscross uh, in various parts of the world, just like you and I. So um, it's kind of a cool story. Well, Lee, thank you for joining us. Lee Diffie of NBC Sports. Watch all the coverage. It's going to be great again uh, next year as well as, of course, throughout this weekend. Living the dream, Lee Diffie. You're watching the Formula One experience here. Not with, not with. When you're made out of the wheel, full steam space machine. Good job, Sebastian. Your pace is good. Blue, you, you moved off the line. You just thought of before I came. I could do nothing. I love to lie with Lucy in the sky. Nice move, Paul. So follow Alonso. Okay, we think Alonso has a broken rear wing. In space, we'll find a secret place where no one else can go. I have a problem on the time. I have a problem on the time. You got a puncture. Okay, we're ready. Full steam space machine. Ooh, close contact. And this is how you just hit me up the back. Calm him down. Maybe you're crossing me on the tree of wall banging. Guys, come on. Your face is good, Sebastian. Keep it up. Every lap helps. Good job, Roman. Good job. It's very clear. I think Perez will have this problem with the stewards.
Okay, Kimmy, we're racing Alonso for the lead here. Need to close down that gap if possible. Okay, you know, try to make it back. Try to make it back. Good lad. That is effectively P3. When you can stand now the floor. It's a better plan by far To blow off the roof and let in the dark Let in the dark, dark. Something's wrong with this car Something is really wrong I can't drive any slower Okay, Jeff, you have no pressure left rear. Come in slowly, come in slowly. Just cover the gate. He's got to stop turning in on me, guys. No problem, engine problem. Safety car, safety car, box, box. Keep the Delta positive, you are boxing the end of this lap, we will stack the cars. How did I get stopped by two cars? Okay Lewis, looks like we lost time on the entry. Told me to have a six second gap. Safety car is in this lap. And it's red flag, red flag, red flag. That means we're stopping on the grid. Okay, checker, we have a brake system problem. We need to retire, the brakes are broken. 
Very well done, Nico. Fantastic job. Race fans, it's a view of Circuit of the Americas you have to experience to believe. 25 stories in the air, you can view the track from the observation deck of the tower. Bring your camera and take a tower tour today. The tower is open for tours each day this weekend until one hour before the gates close. Tower tours are just $35 and no charge for children two and under. Focus on breaking and clean exit. Heavy fuel consumption is higher than expected. If you cannot pass Rosberg, look after the tyres. Weber is now the past Nico. So this time, I'm not serious. Unbelievable. And I think this is a strong wing fit in my helmet. So bad. So bad. Full oh, data really does look very healthy for these tyres, so uh, push. Okay, mate, settle down. Bring your tyres back in. Okay, lose traction metrics are under 2,000. Please just let me drive, man. Blue flag. Copy that, Lewis. He's got the message. I just the door on me and took my wings. Look, the frog got the car. Okay, that's good, mate. That is good. Oh, yes! We won Canada! Fantastic, Seth. Makes up for two years ago. Brilliant drive. Silverstone, wow, British public, amazing. That's incredible, absolutely incredible. And look at the turnout we have. What the hell happened on that start? Unbelievable. Okay, Mark, we can see front wing damage. Therefore, half a tenth quicker last lap, gap at two seconds. A punch, I've got a punch. There's a problem with Hamilton ahead. Hamilton has a puncture, he's in turn nine now. And then a bunch, a bunch up.
course, it couldn't have happened in a f***ing worse place. We need two good lap shifts. Oh, oh a bunch of Be aware, there's another left rear failure, so just take it really easy on those exit curbs. Okay, I must drive. I must drive, not the gearbox. Safety car, safety car. Box mark, box. I can't box it. I can't box it. Stop the car, stop the car, Checo. Okay, Mark, just need to pick these cars up one at a time. I don't know if they made the right choice from the pit. I don't know, Kimmy, but it's too late now. Super, super. One more lap, one more lap. Silverstone, wow, British public, amazing. That's incredible, absolutely incredible. And look at the turnout we have. What the hell happened on that start? Unbelievable. Okay, Mark, we can see front wing damage. Therefore, half a tenth quicker last lap, gap at two seconds. A punch, I've got a punch. There's a problem with Hamilton ahead. Hamilton has a puncture, he's in turn nine now. And a punch, a punch. Of course, it couldn't have happened in a f***ing worse place. We need two good lap shifts. Oh, oh a bunch of Be aware, there's another left rear failure, so just take it really easy on those exit curbs. OK, I must drive. I must drive, not the gearbox. Safety car, safety car. Box mark, box. I can't box it. I can't box it. Stop the car, stop the car, Checo. Okay, Mark, just need to pick these cars up one at a time. I don't know if they made the right choice from the pit. I don't know, Kimmy, but it's too late now. Super, super. One more lap, one more lap.
Welcome back to the Formula One experience here at the Circuit of the Americas. Two Jonathans now, as I introduce you to Jonathan Noble of Autosport in the UK and, of course, Autosport on the web as well. But uh, in my mind anyway, and I read it cover to cover every week, the finest magazine in the world when it comes to international motorsport, Formula One primarily, but uh, all sorts of uh, motorsport. It has been since I was a little boy, uh, been following Autosport, and uh, it's great to have you uh, here in the United States. And I'm interested to know, from an order sport, from a, a magazine like order sport, what is the international reaction to this, what we're calling a new era, effectively, with the Circuit of the Americas here and Formula One? I think Austin's become an instant favourite with Formula One. We came here last year not really knowing what to expect, and everyone's loved it. What, what F1 people like is a city that embraces Formula One. We love Melbourne, we love Montreal, and, and Austin's gone up there. The city's full of fans who love Formula One. The fans are so enthusiastic. I saw you at the Photo Fan Forum. <laughs> downtown on Wednesday, you know, fantastic, best atmosphere I've seen at a, a photo fan forum. Um, and that's why we like Austin so much and, and the track too. I ran it last night and uh, any track where I run around and come around corners and see elevation, I think this is spectacular at the speed I run. It must be amazing in those F1 cars. <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> uh, you do go to all the circuits and you are a regular at every race. Um, where does this track fit into your mind? I mean, you say it's spectacular, but, but there's got to be more reasons for that. We heard from the drivers. What about it from your point of view? I think one key complaint, I remember doing a piece with Herman Tilke, who's taken a lot of flack over the years for some of the circuits he's come up with. I mean, his elevation, I mean, turn one here is, you know, fantastic. I was out of breath at the, the top, and I can't imagine what it's like in an F1 car there, but it's the swoops, it's a mixture of high-speed stuff here, the slow-speed stuff, the long straight. Should be a good race as well, providing Seb Vettel doesn't disappear into the distance. But uh, we had a great race last year. Um, everyone loves this place. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Wednesday night, and of course you were there front and centre because it was an emotional evening, especially for Mexico's Sergio Perez. And I wanted you were right there talking to him. Obviously, we talked to him on stage. Didn't want to get into because it, it was about the fans. I didn't want to get into you know contracts and the future and all the rest of it. But I know you did because it's important for what you do. What did he have to say? Uh, I think, I mean, he wouldn't, he was very honourable, he didn't criticise the team, he understood the, you know, the decision, was, didn't like it, but understood it. Um, I think he's sad that he's going, this is a, his big opportunity, came in expecting to be winning races this year, maybe even the championship, and, you know, he's been there for McLaren, so it's worst season in Formula 1 for a very long time, so it's been a huge disappointment, um, and now he's, it's very late for him to find a seat for next year as well, we're, we're November now, not long, not many seats left either. And I said it to him at the time, Austin, therefore, could prove to be a very essential weekend if there is still some, you know, positions available. Or maybe that's my next question. You're in the paddock, you're out down there, and I know you're fishing for this information too. What is there available out there, and what's the gossip as to who might be going where? The silly season's fantastic this <laughs> year. I remember back in June, July, uh, we chatting to a few people, thinking this is going to be the dullest silly season we've had for a long time, because... Kim is probably going to stay put. Felipe Massa is going to get another contract. McLaren are going to keep everyone. And it was all, all hunky-dory. And suddenly, boom, mm -hmm. Kimi signed for Ferrari. Felipe's off to Williams. Um, Maldonado is now free. We've got Hulkenberg moving around. Sergio Perez is available in the market. This midfield is, is moving around an awful lot at the moment. I think a lot of the focus is on Lotus. If they can sort this deal out with Quantum Motorsports, the new investors, then Hulkenberg may well go there. But, you know, Perez is attractive. He's got some Mexican money behind him. Maldonado has a Venezuelan all company with him as well. So a lot of teams need sponsors these days. It's a reality of modern Formula One. But uh, there's a lot of big drivers fighting for seats. And I think, unfortunately, one big name may well lose out at the end of it. Two questions. One about Alexander Rossi, because obviously a lot of the fans here are interested to see him drive this morning. And he, I suppose, isn't exactly in that mix too, but he's coming up. Mm. Um, but, you know, I think all the American fans, and uh, we want an American driver as soon as possible. Obviously, Mario Andretti is the ambassador here. He's here this weekend, but uh, we need that young guy coming through. Do you think he's got what it takes? I think it's not only wants uh, an American driver. I think F1 in America needs an American driver, I think, to really embrace the, for the country to really embrace the sport. I think it needs an American driver to be successful, uh, to come up there. You know, whether it's Rossi or whether it's the, the next generation coming up, we can't tell yet. But I think it'd be fantastic if we can get it. Every country benefits. We, s we saw in Spain, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I'd go to the Spanish Grand Prix and you could count on one hand the number of spectators there. So going to the Spanish Grand Prix these days, we are queuing for hours to get in. The grandstand's packed. It's fantastic. It shows the importance of a country having, you know, a local drive to cheer on. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you this. Kimi and Alonso, will it work? It all depends on how good that car is next season. We, yes. we, have, we No one has a clue. 
you know, whether it's going to be a, a Ferrari, a Mercedes, or a Red Bull that's going to be the be going to be the best team next season. I think it will all depend on that. If that car's the best or up there near the front, it's going to be a fantastic dynamic partnership and two guys going at it, nail and you know, really pushing on hard. If the car's struggling, then I think there could be you know big problems. Kimi may get disinterested. Fernando may get disillusioned that you know his Ferrari career is not producing the championships he hoped. So either way, it's going to be spectacular. Thanks, Jonathan Noble. In fact, he's got a connection in America. He's known as a nickname is Elvis. So there you are. Work it out. Jonathan Noble from Autosport. If you want to know what's going on in international motor, motor racing, Autosport's the place to go. That's your F1 experience for now. Thank you, Jonathan.